Won't you come and see me? Oh no you won't because I'm in quarantine. Tell me your troubles and doubts, giving me everything inside and out. Tell me when I go, I miss my friends and regular school now. COVID may pull us apart. We miss gathering as a community. Don't you forget about me. Don't, 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 don't. Don't you forget about me. Happy Catechetical Sunday, everyone. I'm so excited to be here with you guys today. I hope you enjoyed our little family video. As you can see, it's a little odd, and um, I just want to reflect on the fact that we're in ordinary time right now, and I don't know about you, but this is anything but ordinary, um, and I hope our video reflected that, and the fact that, you know, sometimes we just have to have these crazy mismatched meals, or the fact that, you know, we're ordering things because we don't want to go out and go shopping and put others at risk or ourselves at risk. We also, you know, sometimes it's this weird trying to sign up for mass, and the mass fills up before you even get a chance to get on to sign up, or your schedule may just be odd, and it's hard to figure out when to go to mass because of the small numbers, and so as we're celebrating today um, and, and thinking about catechetical Sunday, I just want to go to the root word of catechetical. It's catechesis, and that means to echo. And I know you probably remember from when your children were baptized, and maybe you um, have reflected on it since, maybe in faith formation programs or such, is that as a parent, you are your child's first catechist. And so what does that mean to echo our faith? So I came up with a quick top 10 list of things that we're finding helpful as a family during this crazy time of COVID that is anything but ordinary to help us as parents um, focus on being that first catechist. Number 10. First of all, we need to take care of our bodies. We know we should do that anyway, but our bodies are also a temple of the Holy Spirit. So to remember to eat healthy, exercise, and also have good habits for our family. And teaching our children this early on is very important as well. Number nine, family meals. We know research shows that young people who have uh, meals together with their families are less likely to um, participate in risky behaviors. We also know that within our faith, Breaking bread together is a very important tradition and practice. So making that time, whether it's at breakfast, lunch, or dinner, and making it regular for whatever that looks like for your family. Number eight, celebrate intentionally. There's so many beautiful things to celebrate in our faith, whether it be through the liturgical year and the special celebrations that we have during Advent and Christmas or during Lent and Easter, or even during ordinary time. But decorate your home. Take those holidays and holy days and really amp them up. Use this time to celebrate with your family by through the different ways that we can do so in our home with sights and sounds and smells and have fun with it. Also embrace the fact that your children's baptismal dates and what their baptismal names are and their special patron saints and maybe even yours to dive back in. Who is your confirmation saint? And celebrate their feast day as a family. Make that special meal that may have to do with their region um, that they come from or whatever it is. But embrace celebrating our faith intentionally. Number seven, bless your kids daily. This is so important. Like I just find this such a gift to be able to just put a little sign of the cross on my children's forehead and say a private prayer for them. Maybe it's before they go to school or when they wake up in the morning or before they go to bed, before a big test. This is a, a beautiful gift of prayer that we can give our children and only could take a few minutes throughout our day. Number six, feed your soul. As a parent, it's so important that we also feed our souls, that we are also lifelong learners of our faith. You know, I'm constantly learning something new, even um, though I may be in ministry full time, there's nothing, I don't, I don't know everything yet and I'm still learning. And so I invite you to do the same. Listen to a blog, watch a podcast, or listen to a podcast and read a blog, read, pick up a book. Um, just do something to help enhance your own faith, to help you learn more about it, to answer those questions that maybe you're challenged about even. 
Number five, register for family faith formation. We know we are not alone. And our um, DREs and youth ministry leaders and directors of confirmation are all here to help you and to help your family. So utilize the gift of our parish communities to help us build that um, the village that we need to help us raise our young people in the faith. Number four, thanking God and sharing our faith stories. So to take the moment throughout the day to thank God. Thank God for the beautiful gift of waking up. Thank God for the beautiful blue skies that we are getting again. Thank God for whatever it is that you want to praise him and thank him for. But then also make sure that we're sharing those Thanksgiving and praise stories with our children. How have we seen God work in our lives? What are those God moments that we've experienced? To share those with them in conversation is so important for them to recognize how God may be moving in their life. Number three, pray through the day. There's such great opportunity through our day just to take a moment to pray. Whether it means when we first get in the car, whether we're on our way to work to, or school, whether when we sit down to have a meal together. Take these moments throughout the day and pray. And these are also great moments to learn the rich traditional prayers of our faith. Take one on as a family, as a challenge, and lift up that prayer every day at that time. Number two, personal prayer. As a parent, it's so important that we take our own personal private time for prayer. This is maybe happens first thing in the morning before any of the kids are awake, that you pray together. Maybe it's with your husband or wife at the end of the night that you're praying together, but taking the time to pray personally. You can't give what you don't have. At least that's what I found. Um, using that time to just sit with God in silence sometimes, or maybe it's breaking open the scriptures and really meditating upon them. But um, feeding yourself and, and offering your time to God and spending that time in conversation and meditation and reflection with him. Number one, making sure mass is a priority. I know it's crazy right now. And I know it's really hard, especially if you're trying to get into a certain mass time and it may be full. So a couple of tips. A, if you can, call ahead and make an appointment um, to go to mass at whatever time that you prefer. If that doesn't work for your family, then call your parish and find out what masses are less attended that maybe you can just show up to. Um, we really would love to see you back at mass. We miss you. And to come around the table and break bread with us as a big community and receive Eucharist together is such an important thing. It's a fact, it's our source and summit of our faith. So to remember to do that and to, to start making that time to do that if you've gotten out of practice. Also, if you just can't because your schedule's crazy, some parishes are offering, offering mass during the week um, for Sunday mass, or there's always TV mass. I know it's not ideal, but it's a place to start. We wanna welcome you back. We miss you, as I said in the video there. Um, you know, we do, we don't wanna forget you. And we do wanna let you know that we are praying for you. Uh, these are just some tips and tricks that worked for our family. So we just offer them to you. Um, you may have others, please feel free to post them at the bottom here in the um, post. So before we wrap up, just a few people to thank on Catechetical Sunday here. First of all, I want to thank our traditional catechist. Thank you so much for your years of service in many cases, for your yes to helping our young people and their families. Um, thank you to our school teachers who um, are, are also catechists in our Catholic schools, who teach the faith often daily, if not at least weekly. Thank you to you, though, as parents, especially for your yes to raising your young people in their faith. Know that, you again, you are not alone, and we don't forget you, that we do keep you in our prayers, and that we're here to support you in any way that we can. May God bless you and your family, and have a wonderful Catechetical Sunday.